So this is the first video on derivative rules. I'm going to do a video on, first of all, how do we take the derivatives of polynomial functions? So let's look at this function here, f at x equals 5x to the 5 plus 4x cubed plus x minus 7. What rules do we need to be able to take the derivative of that function? And then also, I want to make sure you understand what our result actually means and what applications does it have. So let's quickly look at the rules we're going to need to be able to take the derivative of this function. First of all, you're going to need to know something called the constant rule of derivatives. So if you have a function that equals a constant, c we'll call it, the derivative of that function is equal to zero. So for example, if our function is 87, just a constant number, the derivative of that function is zero. Okay, so that's the easiest rule to start off with. The derivative, derivative of any constant function is zero. Next, we're going to need the power rule for derivatives. So if we have a power, so if original function equals x to some exponent, the derivative of that power would equal n times x to the n minus 1. Well, what does that mean? It means just take the exponent, write it as the coefficient of the power, and then subtract 1 from the exponent. That's where we get n times x to the power of 1 less than what n originally was. So let's see how that works. If our original function equals x to the 4, the derivative of that function equals bring the exponent down, so 4 times x to the power of 4 minus 1, which is 3. Another rule we're going to need is we're going to need the constant multiple rule, right? What if there's a coefficient in front of that power? So what if our original function equals some constant times our power? Well, what we do is, to find the derivative, we just do that constant multiplied by the derivative of the power. So f prime would x would equal c times the derivative of that power. So what we have here is our original function is 5x to the 4. To find the derivative of that, all we have to do is 5 multiplied by what the derivative of x to the 4 is. So 5 times 4x cubed. And that works out to be 20x cubed. So see what happens is this exponent essentially just gets multiplied by the coefficient. That's why we get 20 and then subtract 1 from the exponent and the exponent becomes 3. The last rule we're going to need here is our sum and difference rule. So if our function is the sum or difference of different functions, all we have to do to find the derivative is find the derivative of these different terms separately and then add them together. So the derivative of g to x plus h to x is just equal to the derivative of g to x plus the derivative of h to x. So how does that work here? Here we have a polynomial function with four terms. Just differentiate each term separately and we have our derivative. So if f of x equals this, f prime of x equals the derivative of each separate term added together. So the derivative of 2x to the 5, we'll multiply the 5 down to the 2, we get 10x, and then subtract 1 from the exponent, leaves it at 4. 4x cubed differentiates to 12x squared. 5x, well remember the exponent on here is 1, so 1 times 5 is 5, and then it would be x to the 0, which means there is no x, so no x with that 5. And then this constant term at the end, well, the derivative of that is just 0, so we don't have to write it. So this is our derivative here, 10x to the 4 plus 12x squared plus 5. All right, let's apply um, these rules we've learned to just practice a few differentiable functions. So let's look at ones that may be a little more complicated. So for example, this one, if I rewrite this with a rational exponent, remember cubed root of x is the same thing as writing x to the power of 1 third. Let's see if we can differentiate this. And I've been using the f prime of x notation, but we could also use Leibniz notation. We could write dy over dx equals, that means the derivative of. So the derivative of x to the one third, let's use our power rule. Bring down the exponent of a third, keep the base of the power as x, and then subtract one from the exponents. We'd have to do a third minus one. So a third minus three thirds, that's negative two thirds. So dy over dx equals a third x to the negative two-thirds, and then you shouldn't leave an answer with a negative exponent. So in order to make the exponent positive, you would just do one over this power, or you can just visualize just taking this power, moving it to the denominator, and it changes the sign of the exponent. So what I have here, my final answer written with a positive exponent, dy over dx equals one over, and then bring the power to the denominator, it changes the sign of the exponent, one over three x to the two-thirds, 
or if you want to write it as a radical, 1 over 3 cubed root of x squared. Those two things are equivalent to each other. Let's try another one. y equals negative 1 over x to the 5. Um, if you know quotient rule, you could use that, but probably an easier way to do this would be to rewrite this original function um, as negative 1 times x to the negative 5. Right? If we move this power up into the numerator, it changes the sign of the exponent. And now we can just use our power rule and constant multiple rule. So if we want the derivative of this function, multiply the exponent by the coefficient, negative 1 times negative 5 is 5, x to the negative 5 minus 1, that's negative 6, and then express your answer with a positive exponent by moving that power of x to the denominator, so 5 over x to the 6. Let's try one more before we get into the application and really talk about what these derivatives actually mean and what they tell us about the original function. So here's our last practice. f at x equals this function here. So we're going to have to use all of the rules for this function. We're going to have to use the constant rule to take the derivative of that constant. We're going to have to use our power rule, and we're going to have to use our constant multiple rule. And it's a sum and, and difference of different terms, so we'll have to use all the rules here. So f prime of x equals... We're just going to differentiate each term separately. So I'll do this negative 3x to the 5 term first, and we get negative 15x to the 4. This 8 root x, um, it may help you if you rewrite this with a rational exponent. So instead of root x, remember root x is the same thing as x to the half. So that's really what we're differentiating when we're using the power rule. So you'd multiply the half down to the 8 and get 4, and then subtract 1 from the exponent, a half minus 1. So that's 1 over 2 minus 2 over 2, that's negative a half. Minus the der derivative of 9.3, so minus 0, so we're done there. And we should just express it with only positive exponents. So negative 15x to the 4 plus 4 over x to the half, or 4 over root x, however you'd rather write it. Okay, so that's some good practice of using those basic derivative rules. Let's look at an application of them and talk about kind of what the equation of the derivative actually tells you about the original function. So this question says, determine an equation for the tangent to the curve f at x equals 4x cubed plus 3x squared minus 5 at x equals negative 1. So I've graphed the curve here. Here's the function f at x. That's 4x cubed plus 3x squared minus 5 function. What the question is asking us to do, it's asking us to figure out the equation of a tangent line to this point right here when x is negative 1 on the original function. Remember, a tangent line is a line that just touches the function at one spot. And the tangent line represents the instantaneous rate of change of the function at that exact point. And that's exactly what the equation of the derivative will tell you. It'll tell you the instantaneous rate of change at any x value you want. So it'll tell you the slope of the tangent to any point we want on the original function. So we have to start, if we want the equation of a line, by thinking, okay, for equation of a line, what do we need to be able to write the equation of a line? Well, we can define any line by its slope and a point. So let's start by figuring out a point on the line. Well, the tangent line is going to touch the function at this one blue point here when x is negative 1. So I need to know what are the coordinates of that blue point. So let's figure out what f at negative 1 actually is. Point, let's figure out what f at negative 1 equals. So 4 times negative 1 cubed plus 3 times negative 1 squared minus 5. And we'll evaluate this. So we'll get negative 4 plus 3 minus 5 we get negative 6. So the point negative 1, negative 6 is a point on the function. Let's just double check and make sure that's the right point. Negative 1, negative 6. Yep, it went right over top of that blue point. That's the point we're finding the tangent line to on the function. So we know a point on our tangent line. Now we're going to need the slope of the tangent line. And that's exactly what the equation of the derivative will tell you. It'll tell you the slope. It'll tell you the instantaneous rate of change at that point. So we're going to need to start by finding the equation of the derivative of the function. So we're going to have to differentiate it using the rules we learned earlier in the lesson. So the derivative will be 12x squared plus 6x minus 0. So I'll just leave it like that. So that's the equation of the derivative. And now let's evaluate the instantaneous rate of change when x equals negative 1 by plugging negative 1 into the derivative and evaluating. So we have 12 minus 6. It's 6. So our slope... I'll use m to represent slope, is 6. So we know the slope of the tangent line that touches the function at this green point is 6. And I know it goes through this point, negative 1, negative 6. So I know an x and y value. We can actually write the equation in slope-intercept form. So equation, 
slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So we know a y value for the function. A point on the function is negative 6. So negative 6 equals 6 times negative 1 plus b. Right, the slope was 6 we solved for. The x value of a point was negative 1. The y value of a point was negative 6. The only thing we don't know is the y-intercept. We can solve for it. And when we rearrange here, we figure out the y-intercept is actually 0. So the equation of our function is y equals 6x plus 0. That's the equation of the tangent line. Let's graph that and see what it looks like graphically. y equals 6x. Notice it just touches the original function f at x at that one point. That's what makes it a tangent line. So we've correctly come up with the equation of the tangent line to that point on the original function by finding its slope using the derivative. All right. So <clears throat> that's it for the first lesson. Stay tuned for the next lessons on product rule, quotient rule, and chain rule. And go to jensenmath.ca for um, any accompanying resources you need.